Hello. Today's show is brought to you and sponsored by the wonderful folks at Cards Against Humanity. The folks at Cards Against Humanity have asked us not to read an ad. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to Kevin Pollack's chat show. We were just chatting before the show. Uh, we're very excited about today's show, and I'll give you all the reasons in a moment. No, I won't. Um, for, a, for a while now, we've, uh, uh, I personally have been very, very excited about getting this guest on the show. I reached out at one point. We'll discuss it when she's here. Uh, what happened the first time I reached out? Because uh, we've not talked about it off air, even though we've had about 37 hours before the show actually went live to sit around and, and talk and, and chit chat. Only twice during all of that did I say to our guest today, yeah, yeah, stop talking, this is great for the show. It's a weird thing about this show, really, that uh, I like to, to have a conversation with the guest prior, and uh, invariably, I have to say, please shut up. Uh, we're gonna welcome back, while he's here and agrees to sit this far away from the action, Mr. Sam Levine. Sammy? Hi, Kevin! That's appropriate. How you doing over there, buddy? It's totally appropriate. You good? I'm, I'm okay. I'm what? I'm having a horrible day, Sam. Oh, I'm so sorry, Yeah, pal. yeah, like one of the all-time greats. I'm so sorry. Uh, welcome back. Thank you, happy to be back. You were missed? Uh, I missed you. You're back from Atlanta, and boy, is your Gone with the Wind tired. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Boy, is my gentle southern racism tired. No, there is no gentle southern racism in it. <laughs> Nothing gentle about it. No. Um, um, uh, yeah, we miss you horribly. We're, how do you feel about, about our new digs here at the West Side Comedy Theater that has you in the parking lot? I love the West Side Comedy Theater. I didn't, I didn't know this part of the theater existed where yeah. I am, actually. You, you mean that weird space that you're in? I've never been this far, but I didn't realize. You've never been on stage. Yeah. He's never. I didn't. Yeah. I you never didn't, sat in the audience for a show. I didn't know this little annex of the theater existed, <laughs> where we could technically still see the stage. Sure. But, and we can see you. Yeah. Because um, you're lit. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> Speaking of lit, Jamie? What? How are you? Well, <laughs> thanks. Are you not lit? I know what you meant. <laughs> I know what you meant. We've all been drinking. <laughs> That's why the show started late. Um, what a week it's been. What do we say about the week that's been? Does everyone have Ebola? I just want to make sure no one's been I, left out. I have it twice. You have it twice? Yeah. Okay. I have Ebola, Zaire, and Sudan. I want to thank... It's a... I want to thank the uh, wonderful doctors who are working around the clock to remove the Ebola virus from the planet. Starting first, of course, with the United States of America. Uh, we'll do what we can here first, uh, the world, and then we'll, uh, we'll look after you. The moment we can, because uh, that's the way we do. See, uh, it's not a war. A war we would fight on, uh, on other lands and then worry about things at home. It's not uh, starvation. Uh, we're pretty good looking after the world uh, and then our own starving. Hey, Kevin. But when it Put your oxygen mask on first before helping others. <laughs> wow. Way to put everything into perspective. Uh, but can I use the drink card as a shark cage? Yes. Okay. Hadn't used that joke in 14 years, <laughs> 14 years and missed it horribly. <laughs> what a golden opportunity that was. Uh, ever since Sully, that cocksucker, landed the plane on the water, I've lost all my material about a water landing. Do you want me to do it? Yes, please. Please, I would. Yes, please. It's a drink card of short pain. There we go. I'm putting salted peanuts in the, in the store. Get out of here, you. Get out of here, you. Don't Uncanny. forget that part. Uncanny. Don't forget the tag, <laughs> get out of here, you, which is what I say to the and shark. If you were doing this bit, then you would do the thing where you would, like, get yeah. for the nut yeah. in the bag. I'm all about the nuances and the subtlety of the bit. <laughs> Speaking of which, worst transitions in history. I want to thank the Westside Comedy Theater, which is our new home here for the chat show. Melvin. 
Uh, we're very excited to have this new uh, home, and eventually we'll work out all the kinks of uh, bringing this to you live uh, with proper sound, camera, and lights. But for the meantime, if there's something you feel you need to comment on, please write to us at contact at kevinpollockschatshow.com, and I will have two or six monkeys read it and then forward it to me. Um, sometimes they do, because it's the best of times, it's the blurst of times. How was that? You stupid monkey. Uh-huh. <laughs> Every now and then there's a Simpsons quote. Um, what else can I tell you uh, that you don't already know? I want to congratulate uh, our, our former guest, Ken Marino. I watched the first episode of a new television program that he's co-starring in called Marry Me. And it's easily one of the funniest pilots. I am just going to go ahead and say it that I've ever seen. Uh, pilots always suck as a rule when compared to the rest of the series as it evolves and gets better. Sometimes pilots are pretty good. Rarely are they laugh out loud often. Our guest today uh, stars in a television program. I, I saw the first episode. I don't know if it was the pilot. We're going to find out uh, when she begins talking uh, moments from now. Uh, I, I do remember loving the first episode, but I don't know. So I can't include that in how brilliant Marry Me was and maybe the funniest pilot I've ever seen. So congratulations, Ken Reno, and everyone that's working on Marry Me. I didn't uh, write down any of your names. I'm Timberly Hill. John Kimberling. Thank you, what? Timberly Hill. Timberly Hill? And John that can't really and be John a name. Gimberling. And John Gimberling. And John Gimberling. Yeah. Timberly Hill. John Gimberling. Yeah. Those people should not work together. They have, with those names. No. Timberly? Timberly. Kimberling. Timberly. Oh, I know. And the other one's last name is Kimberling? Gimberling. <laughs> 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 well, what if the first one's name was Timberly Gimberling? Uh huh. <laughs> you guessed it. Our guest today, <laughs> Kristen Shaw. Hello. Why, um, why, um, let's, yes. Why are you having such a terrible day besides the technical difficulties and the late pizza? Did something else happen? I love morning? that you care. Because <laughs> I sense this is rather sincere, this question. Yeah, because I don't know. I think something else happened. I'm a half, I'm a half full guy. Okay. In a big way. Okay. It takes a lot for me to, uh, even say out loud, I'm having a horrible day. Oh, okay. So when oh, I do, okay. yeah, oh. it's a spectacularly horrible day. Jeez. Yeah, did but look you, how happy I am. Did look. you like lose your house? Right, you would think something <laughs> devastating. I would like to restart my life. You ever have those days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But why? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> that suggests I'm going to share my woes with the world, not just you. Oh, you're not going to. Ew. I'm so sorry. Why? That you're having such a oh, bad no, 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 day. no. Here's the deal. I can quickly put everything into perspective and say, in fact, it ain't that bad. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. It ain't that so bad. I won't even need a Band-Aid, which I don't know if you know this or not, about the word Band-Aid. <laughs> Please share. As it turns out, uh, Sammy? Yep. What's the deal with Band-Aid? Uh, brand name Ubiquity. It's number one. It's the number one. And number two? Uh, Q-tip. Q-tip. Because no one ever says, hand me a cotton swab with the end of a stick. What about rarely. Kleenex? Rarely. See, I thought it was Kleenex. It's in the top five, guys. No one ever says facial tissue. And I also thought it was petroleum jelly. What also, about Xerox? Ah, that's also in the top five. Also top, probably top what five. About, and I say Google, because Google is actually a verb. Yeah. So when you become a verb, you, you've right. made it. Well, like, actually, there are... I used Uber as a verb last night. Oh. Uber's a verb now. TiVo became a verb for a minute and a half, and the That's TiVo true. people were actively fighting against that because the problem with brand name Ubiquity is then people will buy a different brand and just call it your brand's name. Ah. It doesn't actually establish brand but name. How can TiVo fight that? Loyalty. Like just go into every living room? You're not TiVoing that. You're well, DVRing it. With the arms <laughs> and the legs to come into your living room and just like be like. Ah. Like the way that the Kool-Aid Kool uh, guy yeah. breaks through yeah. the wall? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's oh, the, yeah. the bastard offspring of the Kool-Aid guy. Now, Miss Shaw, <laughs> if that's your real name. Yeah, that is. Thank you. Why, the, wack why the wacky spelling? Let's start there. Oh, it's, I don't know, it's Dutch or something. Is German. it? Yeah, they, got, they, they doubled up on the A. A little bit. And it's really <laughs> a pain to deal with. It must be. Nobody believes it. Like, even when you say it, and you spell it out for them, they still put one A and two L's at the end. Right. 
uh, and then maybe say shale. Yes, which also shale, doesn't scale. Make scale. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I've enjoyed Pollock. Yeah, uh, you on get many a lot of Pollock jokes. I get a lot of Pollock jokes. Also, uh, those are racist. <laughs> are they? <laughs> Not as racist as uh, most of the jokes used on this show. Okay. Yeah. How, how are you with the uh, comedy racism? You, you do a lot of stand-up comedy. <laughs> we really I, get into I believe, it. I'm not asking to do any, but I, I believe in, uh, in zero censorship mm. uh, for all uh, uh, creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, censorship is important uh, in uh, social situations to uh, be respectful towards other people's feelings. But when it comes to comedy, uh, that barrier goes away for me, and I think we should be able to have fun at everything. Mm. Your take? Uh, my take is that the best comedians pretty much cover those same topics in a way that's incredibly smart, sensitive, and funny, and that's why they're the top comedians, and the comedians that sort of, you know, misjudge it and just fling it out there um, they're the ones that are getting called out, and they should be allowed to test it, and they are. No one's, no one's censoring them. They're saying it, and then people are reacting because I think mainly it wasn't funny first. First and foremost. Yeah. yeah. And then they're like, and you, you took something that was very um, sensitive, not just race, but like rape, et cetera. Sure. You know, like Sarah Silverman has a great rape joke. <clears throat> um, there's a couple great rape jokes <laughs> that I like. Uh -huh. I can't think of them um, off the top of my head, but... I like them because <clears throat> they're funny and they're and they're smart. Isn't it always going to be about in <clears throat> intent? <laughs> With a hot seat. Sure. Like, what is this? Listen. Got two minutes uh, into this? <laughs> <laughs> I like. <laughs> really fighting for my life here. I think it's important. <laughs> That the guests be uncomfortable within the, si <laughs> within the first six minutes, or I failed. I failed horribly. Um, uh, That's how I feel about it. I don't think I get it. Like when everyone was like. You know, this guy said this. You know, and, you know they were mad at him, and and the comedians were rallying, like let him say it. It was just a thing, you know. But you know, like Michael Richards. I, well, that wasn't a joke. That was just a. Anyways. That was someone speaking their mind and not caring where they were that people could record them. Yes. Yeah. Um, here's uh, uh, something I need to know right away. Uh, how was life on the farm as a kid? It was fine. I, you know, I, I think it was sort of dull. Like I wanted some more, um, I wanted a, a little more, oh, what's the word? Uh, fun? Fun, yeah. When you Activities? Get, yeah. Uh, Television? When you're just like uh, something zappy turned on by some sort of thing. What's the word? Excitement. Injection? Uh, what? An injection? Kind of like an injection. Yeah, I wanted some more. Uh, Spark? Fun injections, yeah. And uh, there wasn't much. And I couldn't even ride my bike because there was no, like, it was like a highway. There was no, like, bike paths. So I was sort of stuck there. So the farm and then a highway. Yeah. And? Yeah. But it wasn't, it was, I mean, it was very boring and I couldn't wait to move. But at the same time, you know, it was also a safe Loving environment. <laughs> yeah. Well, you still have the same phone. They still have the same phone number. They still have the same phone number, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Pretty spectacular. Yeah, and they prefer the landline, my parents. I tried to, I did buy them iPhones. They have a better iPhone than me now. They still have the iPhone 4. And they got the 5. And um, <laughs> my mom still turns it off to save the battery. <laughs> So it's like, that's not... So during the day, you can't reach her when you want to you always. You have to reach her later. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Because mm -hmm. she turns it off during the day to save the battery. Yeah, but that's I want to text her. I want to, you know, I, I said I want to text you guys because um, sometimes it's just more convenient. And they were worried that I would never talk to them again if they introduced texting into our um, correspondence. Oh, stimulated. I wasn't stimulated. stimulated on the farm. You were right about the electric like, pricking, because that is a w w way yeah, to stimulate people. Yes, that. Jamie? I have a question about this. How old are your parents? Mine are in their mid-70s. Oh, wow. Whoa. No, um, <laughs> mine, sorry. Mine are, um, I'd say 65, 66, okay. mid-60s. Because yeah. I, they don't, they have cell phones, but they can't, like, text or eat. Like, the computer is, like, very foreign to them. And I don't know if it's, like, a blessing or a curse. Right, right. It's like because they, they call me constantly. 
Yeah. And I'm like, well, this is like a whole conversation I have to have now. Like, they don't, I can't just text them. So, like, what do you, do you feel like it's better that you can just, like, text or email them? Or, like, I don't know if it's, like, a good or bad thing. Like, I'm like, it's nice because it's, like, they're not, I'm not constantly in contact with them. But, like, when I am, it's, like, it has to be an entire conversation. Yeah, it has to be, like, a 30-minute conversation. I think they're giving it a little bit. Like, like, I was traveling last week, and my mom knew it. So she was just like, hey, good job on the thing, you know? And I was like, oh, that's that's exactly, like, right. I'm not going to have time to. She texted that? She did. She that's started fantastic. to text. Yeah, I got two texts from her. That could have been a 17-minute conversation. <laughs> and all it really like, was yeah, was her desire to like say. a 17-minute conversation about, like, hey, can I get those photos? Yes. And like, not that I don't like like, like to, just, I miss my mom. I, like, I, love, I love talking to her when I do. But, you know, sometimes I want to talk to her even more. Sure. Just briefly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's no chance they're watching. No, that. that's why I'm like, why are you backpedaling? Oh, so <laughs> you have no idea how much trouble I'm in right the, now. The irony, the irony about what Jamie was saying about <laughs> about her, because her mom does love to watch the show live, which is great. I wish, I wish my mom could figure it out. Um, well, my sister has to set it up for her. Yeah. So she can watch it. Te- yeah. Um, where was this farm? What state? Colorado. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, how is there already a freeway there? Uh, Highway 66. Sure. Uh, and then, yeah, and then Will County Road 1. So, yeah, there's... Uh, well, what do you mean, how is there already a freeway? <laughs> they existed for years and years before we moved there. <laughs> Did they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, I've decided I'm going I'm to uh, uh, add... I'm going to uh, dovetail in, oh, if you will. Oh, please. I love that. Uh, a 17% increase in my interviews. Because I, I think after 218 prior to this one, mm-hmm. I need to mix things up a little. Okay. So just beware that 17% more of the time than before, I'll be sarcastic question guy. Okay. Like just now when you, I said, were there uh, those oh, highways? Oh, okay. sorry, that's your sense of humor. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay. So just know that, that most of the time I'll be very sincere, and in fact wildly curious. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm doing this, to be honest with you. But I've decided <clears throat> to dovetail in just every now and then. All right, I'll try to catch them. No, no. Oh, I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, uh, when do you decide uh, there isn't enough electric pricking, otherwise known as stimulation, and I've <laughs> simply got to go away? Oh, like College? when I was like seven. Uh, yeah, I was ready. So you to get started out of the plan at seven. <clears throat> yeah, I was like, someday I gotta get out of here. And then I'm like, I'm gonna go to New York City. Um, I'd never been to New York City, but I saw the Muppets take Manhattan. And what? I was like, well, that looks like a great place. And <laughs> which Muppet would you rather be? Well, you know, you gotta be Miss Piggy because she really just enjoys her life, <laughs> you know? And she's got a lot of love to give. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so and, and then I ended up not getting in. Well, my parents weren't really interested in me going to school out of state. So <laughs> we didn't really of... tour colleges or anything. No. They're like, you can go to CU. And I was like, okay. And that was 15 minutes from where we lived. And then after a year of that, I had to get out. So I, um, I applied to Northwestern. Nice. And I transferred. And they said, come on over. They said, come on over, However, but you're a transfer student, and we don't really like transfer students, so when you get here, if you want to change your major, you can't. And I'm like, I didn't know that until I got there, because I was a performance studies major, and then I got over there, and I wanted to be a theater major, and they were like, no. And then I staged this guerrilla performance art show in the dean's office. No, you didn't. I did. And, what does that mean? Um, I mean, I went in to have a meeting with her, and she's like, I'm sorry, it's just the rules. You can't change your major. And I was like, well, I've got something to say about that. And I had these fellow students come in, and one of them played a classic guitar, and they were wearing, like, Greek robes. And it was like a Greek, uh, like, Cassandra was, like, trying to say that Kristen should be a theater major and while, while he played this guitar, and we all made these tableaus. And at the end of it, it was just like such a performance studies thing to do that she's like, you're in the right department. <laughs> no, she, <laughs> <laughs> she was she was right. So, yeah. So you stayed. I stayed, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it really sort of infused uh, what she 
thought was the case. Yeah, it really did. But the one reason I wanted to into your plan switch to theater is because you couldn't take an acting class unless you were a theater yeah, major. Yeah, that stinks. So, I, so what I did was I went to the acting class um, of my friends and I sat in and watched every acting class for three months, every single day, until the teacher felt sorry for me and let me in. So, but you weren't auditing because that wasn't allowed. You were right. just loitering. Then, yeah. And then she like said I was a student and then I like broke all the rules. I was like, now I got everything. I am on performance studies and I got the acting class. And then I got to go to this. Um... So you became Miss Piggy, really? I did. I did. <laughs> I guess I did. I guess I was, I, was, I was pretty badass, but I remember some dark moments, you know, but I was like, let's just make this work. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? That's how my day was today. Some dark moments, and I said, let's just make this Some work. Some dark moments in because... the morning. But the day started, like, you met me at 11.30, which means something went down in the morning hour. <clears throat> uh -huh. And we're not talking about that, though. <laughs> I'm going to, I have some wild fantasy. I'd write, it's all much better, uh, if you don't know. It's much more uh, uh, dangerous and awful. And, yeah. I tell you, then it's like, then it's like even what? When you, even when you What's your problem? The podcast, I don't think you should tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, the truth is, um, yeah, there's, there's way too much in life, uh, in your own or others, to, to instantly put things into perspective if you have any sort of intelligence at all. Okay. It's hard to be... Uh, oh, that's sarcastic. <laughs> I love that. Really good. Uh, Kenny, what are you doing? Uh... <laughs> Kenny so missed his talking to his mother while we were discussing live talking to mothers yeah. that he instantly got on his <laughs> smartphone and started talking to it. My mom's. My mom's. You usually say my mom's. Where is mom's at this point? Well, mom's. Is mom's here or back home? She's here, actually. She is here. Why didn't you bring mom's? Wait, she's in Santa Monica? No, no, no. She's in Thousand Oaks. Yeah, the Thokes. The Thokes. <laughs> That's where the Chens the folks uh, live in the Thokes. Reside in the yeah. Thokes. Nice. Yes. Um, so from Northwestern, how do you get to New York? Other than the obvious route. Okay, so because I because I fought my way in this acting class, you can audition for this thing where you uh, they pick ten of the best students to go audition for agents and managers. Who picks? Uh, the 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 faculty, but of the theater department. The theater department faculty gets together semi-regularly, or once. Once a year, uh, they chooses. take the seniors, 10 of the students of the senior class to go audition for agents and managers in New York City. Were you a senior at the time? Yeah, so I got, I got in and, and I Made got, the top 10. Made the top 10. I went to uh, New York. It was my first time in New York City. I did, uh, this is, he reminded me of this, I, the scene I did was with uh, Robin Lord Taylor, who's playing... The Oswald Cobblepot on Gotham. Don't call him Penguin because he's not Penguin yet. Wow. Anyways, yeah, we did a scene <laughs> together from uh, Nikki Nick uh, Nikki Silver's play Raised in Captivity. Uh huh. And then I got an agent and a manager from that. that. Mm -hmm. So then, I, so then I could move to New York and I already have that. It was really a big deal. Do you send some sort of thank you gift to Northwestern University Theater Department? for that opportunity? Because that sounds pretty damn spectacular. Yeah, they don't the, do it anymore. Uh, they like ended that program. But I, I feel like the gift I gave them was in um, the student talking loans about it now. and the tuition and you know just the $13,000 I was able to pay off eight years later. <laughs> as, a big, as, a, as soon as I, I was like still paying off loans and they were sending letters asking for money. <laughs> Yeah, like, like, come on. because there must be a certain percentage that just keeps sending it because yeah, the letter the, came. The letter came, yeah. It turns out they weren't that good of a college student. I, I gave them I gave them both that money. You gave them plenty. I think so. <laughs> um, so here's another question for you. Oh, boy. Once you get to New York and you have the agents, tell me about your joy of auditioning. Uh, I, I've talked a, a bit about it on the show. I wrote about it. Um, in a side section of my wonderful book, a copy of which is in your gift bag. Oh, thank God. Please, it's what I do. That, you should have let me buy that on Amazon so you could start making some money back. This is awkward because I kind of assumed you had bought my book. <laughs> I'm sure you have a copy of my book as well. Yes, I do. You do? No. Ha! 
<laughs> I do. I should have brought it to have you sign it. You God. damn it. <laughs> I blew it. Um, but I talk about the awful process that's designed to fail that is called audition. Yes. It's a horrible process. It is. Um, the, the confidence you'll have if I give you the part that I need you to have when you do the part is the uh, 180 degree opposite yeah. of the uh, confidence you have when you come into audition. Yes. So how could I possibly know what you're capable of? Right. Maybe you're a good auditioner. You're going to be shit on the set. Yeah. That's Maybe you learned how to audition. How do I know what I'm going to get? Yeah. So how did you find uh, auditioning in New York when you first started doing it? Well, I found that I couldn't get the auditions because you. I didn't fit any type at uh -huh. all. So I maybe like the fat friend, um, sometimes the Zaftig girl I could go in for. But, the Zaftig girl? Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, so when I got an audition, it was such a gift that... Um, there was no quirky. Yeah. There was quirkies. Yeah, there was some quirkies. There, but, you know, there's only so many. Well, like, I just, uh, the level, the agent I had, too, it wasn't like the top-notch agent, you know. She was fine, but she was kind of the, uh, you know. Larry's House of Talent? Yeah, yeah. And so that was Isn't everyone's where first I was agent on. kind of like that? Yeah, you yeah. know, it's one of those sad things where they, they get the people and they do nurture them with what they this, what they have, and then as soon as the people get a little bit bigger, they leave them. Yeah, it's very uh, very it's troubling. But that's life. So, anyways, I uh, I find for auditions, I had to learn that this will probably be my only time that I'll ever get to be in this role in that moment. So then I just uh, enjoy it. Mm. That's how. That's why I psyched myself. I was like, that's "You're never gonna get to do this again, ever. Like, this is it." I have the attitude that I'll never ever get the part, or I'll I'll never sell the script, you know. And so I'm like, "Well, I won't." And I don't. I think that's made me more negative in life. This but is it's gonna also go horribly. Me. This is gonna go horribly. You think? No, no. I'm Therefore, not gonna. This is not gonna go horribly. I'm just not gonna get this. So it's not going to go They've horrible. already picked the... We, I've been on the other side of casting. It's crazy. It's awful. So it's like, well, I'm not going to get this, but I think this is, if, this is pretty funny or whatever, and I'm going to just enjoy being... And then, of course, you get there, and it's a camera, and the casting director are like, meh, 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 and you're like, <laughs> But I just try. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I will stop in the middle of that process and say to the casting director, why are you just saying meh, meh, meh? You will? Yeah. I do. Sometimes. It's... Yeah. It was the person who voiced all the adults on uh, Charlie uh, Brown. Peanuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why she's in casting, by the way. <laughs> How Seems like an gig? odd career choice after the Peanuts stuff, but... Uh, we like to have questions forwarded from the interwebs. Uh, uh, Jamie has forwarded me several. Oh, people are listening? People are watching? Hi, guys! Well, hi. Not, none of them are guys. Oh, so hi, now ladies. it's awkward. Well, I say guys for both genders. I should... Hey y'all! Hey y'all! <clears throat> it's all guys. Okay. I was just told. Oh. Uh, I say guys for gals. In fact, I was uh, at this uh, charity function last night, and one of the things I was doing was teaching a uh, table full of people who didn't know how to play poker how to play Texas Hold'em because it was the first time that they'd been instructed, so that they could have their own little tournament while their husbands or wives went off and played in the other tournament for people who did know how to play, but they wanted to have a table. Of, for anyone who wanted to learn, and uh -huh. it was kind of great. Yeah. And it ended up being all women, and there were 10 of them, and I kept saying, hey, okay, guys, so, okay, guys, 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 and just saying guys. Yeah. And uh, I didn't sense anybody was offended by it. It seems no, guys wildly is, guys is girls. normal now. Yeah. So why can't we change the uh, title of the classic musical to Guys and Guys? <laughs> That's great. You should put that on your act. <laughs> it just dawned on me now that that idea so th thank you for the insta review so, um, tell me about the traveling circus that was the 2013 comedy tour because it seems from all the research that that had to have been fun the oddball festival yes it was fun. It was a lot, of, a lot of work. You saw it? At Which the, one? At the Irvine. Irvine. Yeah. Yeah. Did you come? Um, did you see everything? What? Did you see the whole show? We saw the whole show, but we didn't go backstage. We chose not to go backstage. Did you see me? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh okay. Just curious, because I go on first, and yeah, I always did. just watch people find their Arrive. Seats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. 
So it was it was fun. The the it was I would say it's, uh, it was hard because there was a lot of traveling and you were in charge of your own travel. Oh boy. And um, and oh. your traveling came out of how, how much they paid, paid you too. So you, you got, got the fee, fee and then the fee didn't and then you so so then you're finding the cheapest ways to travel to save the money. But um, I uh, but it was the best part was hands down hanging out with um, the Concords again. Yeah. This is why I wanted to do it. And um, and just seeing them play and like watching backstage. Was like, oh, because that was such a special time in my life. Like that was, you know, that's when the doors flew, flew open. For open. Me. And but it was magical too because uh, we were all innocent. Like we're, you know, we were, it was all sort of our first time. Yeah, they weren't famous here in the states. No, no not yet. To my knowledge, not not as famous as they would be. Sure. Um, so and they're so good. So the songs are so great. And that was was that the show that I think uh, Jermaine got stung by a bee. Oh yeah, right. He did get yeah. stung by a bee while he was playing. Yeah. yeah. And I asked him at one point afterwards. Oh, when I did the interview for the documentary, I asked him if that the one was, that I wasn't there for. Yeah, the one you were the only one you weren't uh, there for. Uh, such a mad crush for Jermaine. This one. Sure. Yeah. He's my Jermaine man. Ah, nice. Like that. That's pretty cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, love them. <laughs> so I asked him if that beast thing was real because it lasted so long in the bit. Yeah. That I thought, oh no, this might be a bit, but it was real, as you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So so that kind of show. I mean, I I started out to stand up, and I I only traveled as a solo act. I never even brought my own opener. I only knew it as an experience of a solo act until I did a small tour, one time only. Uh, it was the 20th anniversary of Just for Laughs. And it was me and five or six other comedians. And we started in the uh, east of Canada and did theaters all the way across the country, ended up in the west. And that was that, that band of merry people uh, atmosphere that bands, of course, experience and, and stand-up comedians with any level of success stop experiencing because you're out there as a, as a solo act, as an assassin more than Band of Brothers. Um, and I found it to be extraordinarily fantastic and felt like, how come I had never done this before? And how do I get to do it again? So I'm curious if, that, if those thoughts and feelings were yours. About the oddball? Question? About traveling, traveling. Even though you're traveling alone, I just mean going to the same. Oh, yeah. So seeing the same. I, even maybe though, dining together on occasion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I prefer uh, festivals yeah. over doing my own shows um, because it's like, ah, because you, you know, you collect comedian friends from all over the globe. So if I can catch like this New Zealand, my New Zealand friends or go to Edinburgh so I can see my, you know, Dublin friends. An Australian friend, and go to Australia for them. No Scottish friends in Edinburgh? This is a big no thanks a question. to the natives. I don't think I have a Scottish friend. Well, you know, it's not important. <laughs> I wish I did. I love the way they talk. Well, Craig Ferguson. Craig, I was just going to say. We're real, real close. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's why, I, yeah, I'd, I'd rather, even though you know, the money is pretty poor, the, um, the chance to see everybody is worth it to me. Because it is really lonely. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. On the festival circuit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about your uh, introduction to the Kiwis. H how did that begin originally? What happened was I was doing stand-up, and um, I got picked to get into the HBO Comedy Festival. In New York? In New York City, yeah, but in Aspen. And they were, they had done it the year before. You got picked to be in the Aspen yeah, Comedy, the Aspen Comedy Festival, Festival. Festival. Somebody saw you in New York. Yes, yes. And so, so they were developing the show for HBO and that year, the year that I was doing the Aspen Comedy Festival. And so the HBO suits were like, I think she's the girl you should have play the fan. And they were like, okay. <laughs> Did they, had they seen you? Uh, they like saw a video of me. Right. And then that was that. They thought you were perfect. Yeah, I guess so. Um, or they just didn't, weren't given any other options. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Really? You never <laughs> asked? Was I forced down your throat? Well, I do, I do think they wrote the part with uh, Melanie Linsky in mind. Sure. Because she went to college with them. Fine. And, um, but I, I told her about it because I, I was like, I got your sloppy seconds. I'm so happy. And she was like, she didn't know what I was talking about. Wow. So I don't think 
that information got to her. Mm. But she was busy doing um, two and a half men anyway, so I don't sure. think she could have done it. Yeah. And also, the, she, I don't think she, w- I don't think her agent would have let her because it was like you're a day player, but you're on for the whole season. Like it was like the the budget was. Um, experimental. You bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The wonderful. Until it got successful. Yeah. So they didn't even start with recurring. They said, "Well, we want you to do." I got paid for the day. An episode. Yeah. And we're going to pay you the least amount possible. Yeah. But there was only three seasons. Two. Two. Two seasons. I got more money the second season. That's what I want to know. Yeah. Isn't that kind of nice? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was yeah. a big deal. Yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah. Sammy, question. Just a stretching of the arm? I'm just scratching my head. Sure. But I'm glad she made more money on the second season. That's what everyone wants to know. Yeah. Did they bump you up to uh, guest star? Second season, no more day player? <laughs> I get... think I was a, I was a regular. You I don't get, remember. You got a weekly it was rate a long there? Time ago. Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, you, I would think you'd be made a regular in the second season. Yeah. Yeah. Did your name appear in the opening titles? Yeah. Regular? Yeah. Sammy knows all the, t- the techniques. He does. He, he, does yeah. he knows how to get a star on the lock of fame. Yep. Mr. Show trying. Business. It would really I'm, like one. <clears throat> you've heard the term Mr. Show Business? Yeah. Whoever that is goes to Sam for advice. That's true. Yeah. I don't like to brag. They offered him the moniker. He said, I don't think so. The monitor? The moniker. Oh, the moniker. And he said, I don't think so. Yeah. Beneath him. Yeah. Um, so then that was your audition. They saw you perform and they said, would you like to do the show? And you said, sure. That's the best kind of audition. You were doing your act. It's true. Right? Yeah, I was. Kind mm-hmm. of fantastic. Yeah. And then you start working on the show, and um, the chemistry is kind of instant, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to have a crush on those guys. Right. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a whole lot of acting. I mean, I mean, it is, but that's an easy game to play. Right. Wanting something you... Which one of them and broke... And they're not wanting you back. Which one of them broke your heart off camera first? <laughs> Neither of them. They were both pretty much married. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much married, I think, is the term used. <laughs> um, they're both so crazy, crazy funny, and not just at songwriting and performing those songs. Um, how much was improvised? Because I think everyone's always kind of wondered that, and it's maybe been asked too many times, but I don't know the answer. Well, I would say, like, there's a couple lines that I'm like, oh, I made, a, I made that up, like the Bonnie and Clyde <laughs> line and right. stuff like that. But, because we would go, they'd write the scripts, they were very protective of their writing. Mm. Um, that's that's which is why they worked so hard. Um, but they would write the scripts and then uh, Reese Darby and I would go and we'd read them together and, and it was totally welcome for us to throw out ideas and suggestions and new lines and then, but then we would, if, you know, it's every show, it's like how much is improvised and how much is real? It's like, it's really what's on the page because there's not a ton of time to go off it, but, you know, if you think of, uh, you're in the moment and then another line pops up, you're like, welcome to stay it. And I think James Bobin, who directed and co-created uh, the shows, um, would let me do, I'd only get to do stuff like three times, because it was like... Three takes? Three takes, because it was like, they had to shoot... Move. Well, they had because they had to shoot a, they had five days to shoot an entire episode and a music video. Wow. Or two. That's crazy. So it was like, yeah, we <laughs> like, it's like okay, we got it, we got it, we got to go. But the, occasionally he would let me do one on, and then let us have fun. Um, because mm-hmm. Brianna Casey from the Twitterverse asked the question to you, which of the Fly of the Concords did you have a bigger crush on? I wasn't going to ask you to choose, <laughs> choose between Kiwis. Because it doesn't really matter because they were both spoken for. Yeah, people um, always want to know that. And I, I honestly, if, first of all, as a character, Mel, she did not have a favorite. She wouldn't. Couldn't. She could not choose. And as, as Kristen, I cannot choose. Yeah. I mean, they're both wildly. Why, why would you? Why would you need to? <laughs> why would you need to? Well, this one and then this. You know, yeah. no, they're both great. <laughs> well, we love to ask the questions here that other people ask you all the time. Yeah. Uh, that's literally one of our favorite things, and it's why I do the show. <laughs> that's sarcastic. Nope. Okay. So, uh, interesting names today. Rarian Rakista, couldn't possibly have said all the, either of those names correctly, forgive me, asked this question from the Twitterverse. As a voice actor, would you mind having your voice turned into an algorithm for all eternity to use? Ooh, no, that sounds great. Send it to space. 
That'll be my hey, Hollywood hey, star. Hey, hey, let's not worry about space right now. How oh. about all of Earth? All right, but I think we should definitely send it to space. Okay, well, <laughs> that's already taken care of. Okay. Today's show that's is true. going into a time Well, capsule. it is. It actually it is it going into space because sound travels from the radio. And mm -hmm. I watched some Cosmos, so I did. Did you? Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. watched every other. I like when he stands on that fake uh, spaceship platform and looks down at, at, the, like at the green screen and points. Yeah, that's not easy. Nope. Uh <laughs> Um, okay, so we do uh, one of the f fun games we do on the show uh, is called Tweet Five. Don't well, roll. Are you going to talk about why I did, I, I'm sorry oh, yes, I didn't please. do the podcast? Oh, do you want to talk about that me first? I did the podcast and I said, uh, I'm I all said, podcasted honestly, out. I, I was all podcasted out. Yeah. I, f I feel like the more I talk about myself, the uh, less real I feel. Less real? <laughs> yeah. I would feel things less interesting. <laughs> that's what I mean. It's oh, like, okay. oh, God, I feel yeah. like a fraud. You know, Nobody God, cares anymore because like I've said the same things over and over yeah, again. Yeah, that's I all. get that. And also, sometimes podcasts, uh, I, w I had done a few but around the time you were asking where. I was just so comfortable. It didn't have this, that, you know, it's just, there's just like a, you don't even notice the record. And then you just really, are, you think you're just having a lovely conversation. Right. But it's really like, no, you are recorded and now, you know, a million people are going to listen to that. And, you, and you're like, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you're not on your guard as much as, not that you should be, but you kind of, that's all. I know what you mean. Yeah. I Podcast. Do know what you mean. Podcast. Mo well, here's the thing. We started over five and a half years ago when it wasn't the new jury duty. Right. So, <laughs> thank you. So One good joke. Funny. That's really good. Um, there was two. <laughs> <laughs> what a batting average. Here's hoping my San Francisco Giants fare better against the Royals uh, in the World Series. Um, f but uh, the podcasting saturation uh, has become a jury duty, not just a joke, but you don't, you don't want to overextend yourself. You don't want to keep telling the same stories again. It's hard to come up with original questions. Um, we we have a wonderful research research producer uh, who uh, I believe is also lit correctly, um, who does a great job giving me like a fifty page uh, dossier wow. on you. So uh, we we go a little deeper than the other ones. So. Even though I know all that, when I reached out and your response was, I'm a little podcasted out, I instantly got it. Yeah. And in fact, had sort of decided to, to be respectful and, and leave it at that. And thinking, well, when and if she ever has a desire, maybe she'll reach out. But since I booked the show myself, now these five and a half years, sometimes getting help from our own Sam Levine and others, but not a lot, um, maybe seven of the 219. Um, <laughs> Wow. Twitter. So what am I batting then? No, you're seven. I see. Yeah. Of 200. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, th I think I'm back to single A farm league. <laughs> Do you want to say 17 out of 219? You know, how about this? How about this? I've stepped up to the plate more. I maybe haven't connected as much. Mm. <laughs> that is a fair and accurate description. Um, but what happens is Twitter will book more guests for the show than I or Sam. Right. Because someone on Twitter will yell at someone like you. <laughs> at your at a name. A few times. Yeah. yeah. And they'll say, hey, at Kristen Schaal. The. The Kristen Schaal. At Kristen Schald. Schald. At Kristen Schald, for those of you that would like someone to follow. Someone took, took my name. Please. Well, I mean, someone has the same name. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> they didn't take it. Really? They didn't. Yeah, I couldn't get that when I tried. Someone has your, your not not on Twitter, but. Has my Twitter handle, yeah. How many people genuinely named Kristen Schaal no, do you think, think are tweet. out there? Oh, Maybe nine. Nine total. <laughs> so, that's a wonderful comedy number for me. Nine. Is that a LSD? Yes. <laughs> no one's ever asked it so accurately. <laughs> yes, it is. And please stop asking. Both of you. The other you is a dragon. That's not weird. I that's like Games weird. of Thrones. I am a dragon on the inside. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, yeah, but... Um, no. So okay. when you get the when you get <laughs> when you get the fun that is uh, fly to the Concords, yeah, and it becomes what it becomes. Uh, do you remember the first couple of times somebody recognized you, but maybe for your voice first, like like you're in the grocery line and someone turns around and says it is you. I remember because I was living in Brooklyn. Um, 
I remember the first time someone uh, saw me. Well, well, it was started to air when I was doing shows in Edinburgh, Scotland, and I just noticed that my MySpace page got more and more friends. And I, and I, because I didn't re realize it was airing. And then I was like, oh wow. And then I remember coming back and someone saying, um, "Hey, you're from that show." And I, and I really liked it. And I got scared. I was like, you like this too much. That feeling. Don't like this too much because it can go away and it's also a natural. And then, um, and then after a while, I, I stopped liking it. So it's fine. <laughs> but were you able to quell that voice? What voice? In your head that said, don't like this? Um, don't get used to this. It could go away. That voice is no, still that, there. That voice was pretty smart because it's not a... It's not, um, it's not a good thing to want to have. It's oh no, it's not. But it's okay to enjoy it. I think. Yeah, it's okay want to it, enjoy it. And dangerous. I think, and I need it. Awful. Yeah, it was just so new to me. Flattered. Fine. Yeah, yeah. but it was like I've never got noticed at anywhere I went. Like I, you no. know, people. I, I was under people's radar. And then how which fun is it? Pretty great. And yeah. I kind of miss it because I used to be able to like stare at people. <laughs> I really enjoyed people watching. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. And then, and then how fun is it when people snap their fingers in your face asking, what is, what is it the thing that I know you from? <laughs> Boy, do I never get tired of that. I know. What's that thing? That's the worst because oh, it, then it doesn't matter what you say. It's never that thing. So then you're just standing there listening your resume feeling worse and worse. It's just, going down the list? No. 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 Exactly. no. He says the exact same thing. Yeah. 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 It's, it's very exact. uncomfortable. Because then you start listing it, and then they're like, no, that's not it. That's not it. Oh, I, I tried I got to... yelled at because of him. Yeah, she got yelled at. She got <laughs> yelled at. they're like, what do I know him from? I'm like, I don't know what you watched. And they're like, just tell me. And that's I'm like, not disconcerting. Know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you're is, fine. It, you're fine. That's not disconcerting But that's a game that I get to play. It's my own personal game, which is when people come up and they're like, hey, where do I know you from? And I'll say, oh, well, let's find out. How old are you? And they go, oh, I'm, I'm 21. And I say, oh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Florida. And I go, oh, you're a Sydney White fan. Yeah, that's it. So it's a little game I get to play. Yeah, I get we, to we find my demographic. That now. Yeah. It's like we can, we I enjoy it. Search we the demographic. people by. I'm like, oh, you're a fan of hostage, aren't you? <laughs> I see what she did. <laughs> yeah. Like I did. Uh, yeah, she's all that. It's a very there specific that, demographic. Yes. Exactly. Grumpy old men, a very specific demographic. Yeah. You start to zero it in instead of going down the list. Yeah, I just say, did we go to high school together? Do I not? Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> That's one of my new go-tos. I don't ask, though. I tell them. Oh, we went to high school. Yeah, yeah. And then I say I was your lunch lady. <laughs> I look like a cafeteria woman. What does that even mean? I've been, I've been told that, that I look like a cafeteria lunch Specific lady. Specific Yeah, words. No, you look like my cafeteria lunch lady. What a delightful thing to say. Hey, I give food, food to the, hungry, the hungry kids. Like, yeah. I, I'm like, okay. So sometimes in life you'll put on a hairnet and go to a soup kitchen and give... That's the, in theory, and I wish that that was true. Yeah. If you could That's spend Thanksgiving price. with your family mm -hmm. or Thanksgiving giving away food yeah. on, to hungry people, like going to a place. Well, obviously, I have that choice every time, and I always just go to my family. Right. I, I need to work on my charitable side. I finally realized, I'm, and I am, I am working. I mean, I'm charitable to my friends and stuff. But, but isn't not. going back to see your family a bit, a bit charitable? Well, that is, yeah, I have to do that, too, though, because I only see them, like, maybe twice a year. I think the magic words there are have to. Well, I have to. They're my family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As opposed to I choose. Oh, you're right. You're right. But I could. You're right. You're right. No, no. I, I have a lot of guilt about, about whether or not I'm doing enough to help uh, the world. Which is good because it beats the disconnect. Yes, yeah, That would sure. be the opposite of that. <laughs> Kenny, how are things? Just let me check in for a second with our own evil Dr. Chen. How are things? I noticed you having a, a conversation with the pitching coach. Yes. Uh, whether or not to bring in the left-hander. A slight audio thing, but you think we're going to be all right? Huh, interesting. <laughs> Never knew there to be a slight audio problem. <laughs> Just a little, they can hear it a little bit. It's either perfect or it isn't. <laughs> I'm saying it's not. Um, all right, so I need to know a couple things about okay. your life uh, in the world of animation. I'm speaking, of course, of that wonderful show called Flipping Burgers. Now You came to the Bob's Burgers live show. I did. That was exciting to see you there. We did. We were so excited to be there. Yeah. 
Um, here's a line that Jamie and I will say in context <laughs> of nothing on a fairly regular basis, like just a random piece of dialogue. Your character, Louise, said it. I'm convinced you improvised it as an actor. Okay. The line is, where do you even shop? Where do you even shop? Do you remember the moment? In the episode, I hate to put that on. What right? episode? Exactly. I bet, I did. So I bet I did improvise Do you want to see that. my receipt? He's pulling down it his pants. It was a bicycle, a guy on a bicycle. Uh -huh. And then I'm like, you stole that bicycle. It's about it's the like, black garlic, right? Yes. Yeah. And he pulls down his pants and says, do you want to see my receipt? And oh, that was all and you improvised. Say, pulling down the pants, that's got to be improvised, too. And then you said, where do you even shop? <laughs> oh, that's fun. Yeah. So for no reason at all, one, one of us will say, where do you even shop? Where do you even shop? Where do you even shop? Uh, <laughs> the character. Why would his receipt be him moving? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to say the character of Louise may be my favorite child character in the history of entertainment. Oh. No, no, no. But let me tell no, you why. He's lying. He's a gene lover. Oh, uh, no, that's unusual. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I love Gene like crazy. Yeah. But here's why I think Louise may take the cake. First of all, they both share one of the reasons, which is. Um, utter disregard for the other members of their family <laughs> in pursuit of their own happiness, which is probably most children, but the utter abandonment of whatever their design or goal is in the moment, whatever the thing they'd like to achieve, a complete commitment, no matter how ridiculous the plot might be. Uh, but within that remains for both the actors uh, you and former guest Eugene Merman. Merman. <laughs> uh, which is a level of uh, playfulness that comes through, you know, so, so there are men on the show who do the voice of women. There are adults on the show who do the voice of children. Um, it, it feels more connected for some reason in, in Louise because she's at times diabolical. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> she seems to be the member of the family who's least enamored by the family, <laughs> by being a part of the family. Uh huh. Uh, and yet, she's 100% adorable always. Uh, please tell me how much fun it actually is to be this character on a regular basis because I want it to be terribly fun. Oh, it's so fun. Okay. It's the best. I mean, I feel like I'm releasing so much too and um, of like the child person that I am yeah. inside just gets to come out yeah. and thrive there, which, right. you know, as an adult, that's not allowed. Yeah. But I just get to be so goofy and, and really smart and mean. And, but, there, but she is vulnerable and she definitely like loves her family. But, um, Can't let them know. Yeah, let them know, yeah. Yeah, it's the best. It's the best. That character is just getting... Well, she was fun to play at the very beginning. Like, sometimes if I'm visited by a little nephew or a, or a friend's kid, I find myself um, at, sort of copying them a little bit. Like, when they leave, I'll, like, say the thing. There's something about the way kids act that is, you know, so fun and free. It's like watching a dog on stage. Like, you just don't know what they're going to do. And right. So, so it's just a really fun... Fun character to play. Yeah. You're, but you are right. It is It is bottomless joy. Uh, how about the percentage that's improvised? Um, I would say this is, we get this a lot because we do record as an ensemble uh, every Wednesday. That's important to know. I think it's quite rare. It is. But I think we're the only, definitely the only uh, prime time <laughs> cartoon show that does it because uh, it's hard to get everybody's schedules uh, synced. Yeah, this, these are demands. It is a demand, yeah. But you have it, to be there at this time. You have to be there at this time, It's yeah. nice, it, as you just said, every Wednesday, it's nice that it may be the same day, same time it on is. a weekly basis. Yeah, it That's is. That's pretty spectacular. Yeah, so we all sort of, and you know, if we get another job, that I always, I try, I'm just like, and Wednesdays I need to do this. And if they can't accommodate that, then sometimes they can. I'm like, look, <laughs> this is going, this is live, this is my voice, I can't do it. But And they understand. Right. But um, yeah, so I would say because we're all together, and the reason why we're together is not only just because it's 
feels and sounds more organic for Lauren Bouchard, who created it, but also because they want us to riff. Yeah. But the best jokes and the best structured, uh, you know, scripts are already written, and the writers are incredible. And I don't yeah. want to take anything from them. But Never take anything away from sometimes them. Sometimes when you can go off thin lines, like, and I'm pretty sure, I don't know, maybe this wasn't, maybe it was written, but stuff like that it just that kind of trails like around we find. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, and that's so fun. Yeah. I feel Eugene Merman would probably be pretty spectacular. Eugene Merman has a ton of improv, and yeah. especially regarding food. <laughs> he knows every Food and poop. International food. Poop, you know, he does shy away from poop a little bit. He's actually more, really, he's actually a little more modest than you would think uh -huh. about pooping. Well, that's probably the Russian background. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Yeah. Uh, it's got red written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to include these fine folks. And then uh, let's start to do a little prep work on the Who Tweeted, uh, which is a game we play here. Uh, uh, but first, um, I mentioned before we, we do a thing called uh, the Tweet 5 where the audience will write in a series of five rapid-fire questions for you. Okay. They'll be this or that. Okay. Uh, Coke or Pepsi kind of thing. No correct answer except your opinion. Um, there's a graphic that goes for this for the Tweet 5, a song by Dave Keckner. Let's play that tweet now. Tweet 5, Tweet 5, Tweet 5 forever now. Are they watching us listen to this? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the graphic takes over the screen. Um, which is why my eyes rolled back up into my head. <laughs> this one is from uh, Zep, Z-E-P, Zep, uh, from the Twitterverse. These are five questions designed specifically for you. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Acting or voice acting? V acting. Weird. Mabel or Louise? No. Backstage or on stage? On stage. Concords or Weird, weird Al? Concords. <laughs> Sorry, <Web>. Al. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why they're making me pick again. Well, this is Sophie's choice. It's a good yeah, it really is. Yeah. yeah. And the most difficult question of all, clearly, Web or TV? <laughs> TV. What's so funny? <laughs> it's just like, so, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, will, I'm willing to take on a career in web, too. <laughs> and, and, you know. If it's good, yeah, if more it's people good, will technically see it. It is the next. And there's that. It's the next generation of entertainment. Yeah, I mean, the truth of the matter is I was just talking to somebody about Saturday Night Live probably has an average of, I don't know, three, four million at most. When um, it goes live? When it goes live. And then maybe 100 million will see it online. What? 100 sure. million? Worldwide. Wow. Over time. That's impressive. I mean, an episode will live in perpetuity. Right. Through the internet, right. through clips. Right. And I'm really, what I really mean is 100 um, impressions, 100 million impressions. Mm -hmm. So maybe they watch a clip. How many people watch just a clip? How many people watch several clips? One person watches nine clips. That counts as nine. Uh, in my head, it's only one impression, truth be told. Um, but the numbers always, and 100 million is clearly an exaggeration, but it's so more ginormous than the people who watch right. anything live. Even if it's DVR'd, there's still a sensation of it being live, and that's what's incredible and exciting. But the truth is, um, it's the tablet and the ever-growing phones that people are, are going to watch yes. everything you do more and more and more. Yeah. Are you hearing, in fact, from the, uh, the We Flip Burgers? Um, I'm just going to refuse to call it its correct name. Oh, maybe that's a Scott Ackerman bit. Maybe I should stop doing that. We love... Uh, Comedy Bing Bang. Comedy Bing Bong. <laughs> um, so, uh, what do you think? I mean, it, it seems like a show like that would have these wonderful ratings... Um, on a great night for Fox, on one of its only great nights, sorry to say, for the network. Um, and, th and those numbers are calculated as they are. And it seems like now, all, even at the upfronts, all the downloads and all the iTunes and all, the, all of that, and they're factoring in DVR recording. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. But they're also factoring in Hulu numbers, and they're factoring in every which way mm -hmm. the show can be watched. Mm -hmm. Um, so in the end, I think what I'm saying is we're all doing a web show. Ah, that's true. Because the next generation just wants to watch it when they want to watch it. And it's, it's 
so drifting away from the giant, fabulous flat screen TV and onto some sort oh, of tablet. Oh, I hope not. Give the That's, kid the tablet. I just, Here you go. Daddy and I are going to dinner. They got to know that it's, you can't watch Game of Thrones on a tablet. Shouldn't. You shouldn't. Yeah. Like, there's some TV so good right now. I think you really want to give it the, the you know, presentation it deserves. And how about filmmakers who say, I don't care how big your flat screen is at home and how wonderful your sound system is. I'd rather you see my film with the theater. Yeah, that's funny because I was, I was, we were, we had a choice between Gone Girl and Birdman yesterday. And, um. You made the wrong choice. Well. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, we don't need to go into it. You read the book. You wanted to see the movie. So you chose Gone Girl, and then? The, uh, but I was asking someone, because we were really like, ah, it was just, I, I was like, is Birdman, um, could I watch it at home? You know, and they were like, no, 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 there's really long, beautiful cinematic shots. I'm like, okay, just wanted to make sure, so we'll make another movie. Jamie check. and I have seen the film. I think that's a correct uh, suggestion a friend gave about, you. I want to back up a little bit. Please. You are talking about, you know, just like television stuff, and she was in my, you're in my favorite pilot of all time. The Mad Men pilot. The Mad Men pilot. I think is the best pilot. That, that is. It is really good. Of all time. Yeah. And yeah, and she has. A, she's a telephone operator. Mm -hmm. She's a switchboard operator. Good eye. Good eye. Yeah. Oh, her attention to details at a genius Whoa, level. Right. And flow. Uh huh. Uh, and then yeah. Up in the crow's nest, are we good to go on the Who Tweeted game? We're yeah. just about out of time. Yes. We're gonna go to Who Tweeted now. Please roll the graphic. Roll it. We'll make oh, it a fast oh, one. Here we go. Oh. You're now you join us? I get to join you. And oh. now is when the so fun begins. It's <laughs> been nothing but torture and pain. Really? For you. Oh, no. I'm I've enjoyed fun. the hell out of this. Me too. Okay, good. Me too. All right, good. We're I... back? Yeah. Oh! Hey, gang, it's time to play Who Tweeted. Wow, that camera's so far. It's time to play Who Tweeted. <laughs> um, He's hey. zooming in. He's zooming in. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, so here's how the game works. Uh, one at a time, I'm going to read a series of eight tweets. And uh, this uh, tweet five uh, is brought to you by Bob's Burgers Regulars. So that means all of these tweets were written by either Aziz Ansari, Sarah Silverman, and Andy Kindler. Okay. Okay? okay. You get that? I did. I like it. We're dealing with Aziz. <laughs> Sarah okay. and Kindler. I follow all three, so that helps. Oh, you're in a, that, that puts you at a tremendous advantage. <laughs> you might remember some of these. <laughs> tremendous so advantage. here's how it works. I read a tweet, and once you feel that you know who of the three of those people authored it, you buzz in by saying your name. Then you will have three seconds after I point to you to say either Aziz, Sarah, or Kindler. Okay. You buzz in, you get it right, you get yourself five points. Buzz in, you get it wrong, you're going to lose three. And at the end of eight questions... Whoever has the most points. Oh, are that. you serious? Yeah. There's a cash prize? Cash prize. What the hell? Cash prize. Whoa. We've never done that before. Whoa. That's not true. Someone's having a good year. <laughs> you know what? I like, I, like to see, I like to see honest competition. <laughs> I don't want either of you to half ass this. Are you ready to play Who Tweeted? Here we go. Yes, yes I thank am. you. Thank Tweet you. number one. <clears throat> you can't say anything racist anymore without people Kevin, immediately. Aziz. No. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to be the K on the left. <laughs> does, that, does that mean that... I get negative you're, three, you're winning. negative three. So we, that we don't get the... No oh, second chances. Okay, got it. But no he'll tell you who it was. I will tell you. Finish the thing. Uh, uh, you can't say anything racist anymore without people immediately accusing you of being racist. Hashtag racism2014, Andy Kindler. Yeah. Tweet number two. It's imperative that you not make eye contact when dealing with drunk people. Kristen... Uh, Sarah Silverman. That is correct. She doesn't like drunk people. She'd rather be stoned. I love it when the guests win. Tweet number three. Dinner. Leftover no, salad. Kristen, Kristen, Chris, Aziz. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, really? He's talking about food, though. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Wait, if you, here, if you let me finish it. Uh. Dinner, leftover salad, one Lindor chocolate, a popsicle, and four big spoons of peanut butter per end while staring straight ahead. Close per end. Good night, Sarah yeah. Silverman. Okay, Sarah Silverman. that's it's all right. You're still in the lead. Important that these aren't obvious. You're still in the yeah. lead with Jamie plus two. Jamie picks them and she tries to pick them so that they're not okay. obvious. You're still in the lead with plus two. Tweet um, number four. So Judd Apatow thinks I should be spending more Kristen, time. Kristen, Kristen, Aziz, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, no. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I do. 
do love that you're raising your hand、oh. and saying your name. Okay. That's making me very, very happy. <laughs> that was that was、uh, Andy Kendler. Judd Apatow thinks I should be spending more time writing jokes. I guess I better get cracking. <laughs> okay, we're both in the negatives now, but you are still technically ahead in the lead. Negative、Sweet. one to negative three. No,、yeah. crushing me.、Yeah. Five. Does anyone know the editor of Blacklist magazine? Feel like it's a little spader heavy Kristen, every month. I'm gonna. Three seconds. Sarah Silverman. Oh God! Oh, she's in Sarah. That was his ease. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's all right. You're now、know. down by one point. It's a one, one point game. Point. Anyone's game. Okay. And between us, we've got one correct. It's all right. That's <laughs> just it's just looming how, over this. How many left?、Uh, three. This is three. Number six. Final three. Three number six. Just found out there are still people named Cliff. That's such a great tweet. That's su-、uh, Kevin, Andy. Oh, sorry, no. Sarah Silverman.、Uh, that was Sarah, but no points to you. Thank you.、But、We are、uh, <laughs> negative <laughs> negative four to negative six. <laughs> so we call a real barn burner here on the who tweeted. Wait, we've got one correct <laughs> out of six. Tweeter, still possible for at least one of you to wind up. Well, for、uh, well, no, at least one of you to wind、Keep、up. Keep going. Tweet number seven. <laughs> the art of shaving store closed in Beverly Hills. Why do I live in a Kevin, country? Kevin Aziz. No. <laughs> God damn it. Gotta be Andy. That was、yeah. Andy Kindler. What, you mean the other guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a fifty fucking fifty. Gotta、50. be Andy. And missed it. Now, Kev, if you ring in and get this last one、oh, correct, oh shut up. Just we're gonna be tied. <laughs> If you were going to get the one, oh, we、tied. are. You're right. I'm just putting that out there. I have a chance to tie it if I answer correctly. Otherwise, you win. Okay. So、Here、you could、go. just lay back and put it on me. Here we go. I'm just saying it might be a strategy. Might be a strategy. Just lay back. Here we go. Or if you know it. With、yeah. all due respect, people of China, stop seeing Transformers so much. You're making movies worse for everyone. Kevin Sarah Silverman. The game goes to Kristen Shaw. This has <laughs> been an epic failure. And、not、I、for me. Not I, I, I can't take your money. I can't、It's、take your money. It's the show's money. money, and you're taking it.、That、It's a cash a, prize victory.、Ah! <laughs> I was wondering at home. Oh my gosh! I'm sorry. Oh my goodness! And that is two, how you play. Three. Who tweeted? Best looking twenty dollar bill I've ever seen. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. So I got、uh, five incorrect. Yes, that is that is accurate. Yes, with a score of negative、uh, fourteen. But I feel like the last time. The Or negative negative twelve. When we played with Alex Winter, you guys got all of them correct. Yes.、And、I feel like that was was that the last time that we played this. I believe it could、right. have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Like we went from like one extreme to the other. Like you got all of them correct. That's pretty cool. I th- got them correct. I think that's an important. Th-、uh, uh, you actually got the only one correct. Out of all eight, so you should win just for that. Well, what that shows is that Aziz and Andy and Sarah are pretty much the same person.、So、pretty much the same person, and they just, or they Jamie just, did a very good job of selecting tweets that we weren't obvious and we couldn't tell. They've all just hired the same joke writer who tweets、oh, for them. <laughs> Excellent point. We're just about out of time, which makes me very unhappy. Yeah.、Uh, part of the horrible day I had was that.、Um, For no one in particular's fault, we had a few technical issues. All right, it was everyone's fault. We had a few technical issues, and the show got started very, very late、uh, compared to most shows. But we're brand new to this facility. We've not had enough tech rehearsals. We're going to try to squeeze in some more before our next shows. Wouldn't you like to know who's coming up guest-wise? I would like to know. Okay. Can I guess? Give、yes. me the first letter. Okay. <laughs> Let's do that.、Um, the first letter of the names. Yeah. C, E. The first initial of the second name is an E. <gasps> C E. Chris Elliott's coming on the show. Chris Elliott. I wish. Oh. But、uh, I'm also thrilled that it's Carrie Elwes. Oh. Yeah, oh. That's great. Yeah, he's got、that's、a new book. He's got a new book about Princess Bride, and he's finally、oh, able、right. able to talk about well, everything. All I'm gonna talk about is the crush. Yeah, you all are. All I'm gonna talk about、oh. is men in tights. Yeah, you are. All I'm gonna talk about is. Is tuning in to watch you now. <laughs> so that'll be next Sunday off, and then the following Sunday, November second, we'll be back with Carrie Elwes, followed by, as threatened and now penciled very darkly in ink,、uh, Allison Janney, the six-time Emmy award-winning and、oh. obnoxiously six-time Emmy award-winning Allison Janney. She said that in her acceptance speech. How obnoxious she it was! She was just like, "Well, it was such a nice speech," and she's like, six. 
<laughs> and we were like, okay. <laughs> that's pretty great. It was like the most humble, sweet speech. I was like, oh, wow, that's great. And she's like, six and counting. Like, seriously, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, she's spectacular. She's very talented. Oh, it's unfair to the others. Uh, <laughs> followed by Jake Kasdan. She hooked me the other day. She, yes. She what? We got... She danced up all in Jamie's uh, business. Get your fake wife off. Get your fake walk off. I'm working on the television program Mom that Allison's a star of and just oh, won her yeah. sixth Emmy was for yeah. the show, Mom. So I'm uh, recurring on it uh, at present. And, Congratulations. Um, oh, please. And uh, uh, I'm doing great work. And um, uh, Who are you playing? The restaurant manager? Yeah. Yeah, I think no. I saw you. Oh, okay. I play a, a character who knocked up a 18-year-old Alice and Janney's character to make Anna Ferris. So you're a dad. The long-lost father. That's cool. It's pretty cool. That's fun. Chuck Lorre, he knows what he's doing. He does. And you know what part of it is? What? He's got a great warm-up act. He does a have great a great warm-up stand-up guy. Yeah. That he pays extra because he can't lose them. Because that's like one of the most important things you can do. The have. audience warm-up. Mm. Yeah. Who is it? I don't know. Oh, I do. Who? I'm not telling you. Fair enough. Okay. Because um, <laughs> I think that was true, and now maybe not so much. Uh, there, there are three of them interchanging, oh. I mean, and maybe he pays them more because he doesn't want to lose those. You three. don't want to lose once you get them. They're no, hard to find. That's a really, weird job. It's a very Have weird and difficult it? job. You it's a very done? weird and difficult job indeed, and I don't envy it at all. Um, so yeah. So anyways, uh, uh, Alice, uh, after the show, we might go up to one of their dressing rooms and celebrate how well the live show went. We might do that. And uh, a couple nights ago, when we might have been doing that, Allison was, was everyone, everyone was dancing at one point, and including oh, Star-Lord, also known as uh, Chris Pratt, former guest of the <laughs> show, who danced like this a lot. Uh, it was fun to see Skylord dance, not, not in the suit. But then, um, Skylord, Star-Lord, and then uh, Allison, I have a photo of it, I might share it on the web at some point, was dancing all up in Jamie's business, uh, the two of them, and she did say to me, get your fake wife off of me. It was a magical moment for everybody in the room. I'm sorry it fell so flat here. Oh. I liked it. Did you? Kristen. Uh, it's like, I'm just laughing because Byron always tells me that I'm one of those people that just should not tell stories. And that whatever, that's what it reminded me of. Yeah, about how badly I just did. So oh, I love that. You story. have one minute. Yeah, I have to go. And in that one minute, I would like you to do us the honor yeah. of play the Larry King game. Okay. I've explained the rules. I'll re-explain them. Bad Larry King impression. Share something about Larry, not you. You as Larry, share something about Larry that no one wants to know or cares about. You can go back into the history of the prehistoric animals because he's very old. And then go to the phones. Okay. That's your camera. When you're ready, be Larry King. Play the game. Hello, I'm Larry King. And I had to say that when I interviewed Lady Gaga and she was wearing my outfit, I didn't like it that much. It felt like that's my thing. Find your own thing. <laughs> okay, now we're going to the phones. Finger Lakes. <laughs> <laughs> did you pick up the receiver? Is that what yeah, was happening? I, I did. And then I... Perfect. That's all we can ask for from A. <laughs> Kristen Shaw. Uh, thank you uh, wonderfully. Thanks, Mr. Paul. I... Uh, honestly <laughs> and sincerely. Um, and now sit there uncomfortably while I wrap things up uh, for the folks at home. I want to thank uh, 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 Sammy for returning to the show, Jamie for being on the show, uh, Jason, J Mac, Kenny for making the show, uh, Megan Williams joined us uh, for makeup uh, in replacement of uh, the, our own Samantha Ward, and Angie, Angie Johnson, give her credit for no particular reason, yeah. Daniel, Danielle, you heard me. Overlin, uh, the media maven, uh, our own Byron, right? Yep. Yep. I just have one last one last plug I want to get in that I didn't I mean, get in at the top. I'm sure Byron appreciates it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate Byron letting me sneak a plug in during his thank yous. We'll put it in between your first and last name. Uh, 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 selfie. My first of three episodes begins airing the day this drops onto the internet. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. This Tuesday, eight o'clock. Uh, uh, Eastern, 7 Central on ABC. Selfie. Watch the fucking show, please. Please watch while you can. Byron, <laughs> uh, 
His last name is Tanner. Three last names come to mind every time I look at you and say the name Byron. Is it in fact Kennerly? Yes. yes. Thank you, Byron Kennerly. There you and go. Sean Casey, thanks for. My instinct is to say nothing. Yeah. Hey, right. Josh. The, you didn't thank me twice, Josh. Uh, I said J Mac and Jason. You said Jason and J Mac. Jason and J Mac. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this day is Maybe that's my way of, you know, passive aggressively not thanking Josh. Uh, thank you, Josh <laughs> Nagrin and Jason McIntyre. Uh, I will see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, I believe that's it for now. Uh, and so until next time, get out of my face.